Sometimes during the winter, I just like to settle down with a good book, especially if it's from a local author on a subject that I love. We're down here in Sanford in Accomack County with C.L. Marshall. C.L., how you doing? Good to see you, Willie. C.L. has written a book called Chesapeake Bay Duck Hunting Tales, and it is a collection of 30 stories of uh, the way duck hunting and goose hunting is uh, such a big part of the culture down here. And CL, it looks like uh, from the stories that are in this book here that duck and goose hunting is just a lot more than just a sport down in this part of the country. It truly is, Willie. Uh, it's almost a, a way of life down here now, but much more than the waterfowl hunting, much more than the bag you bring home is the camaraderie and the, and the connections you make, the people you meet, and that's truly the joy of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a family endeavor, it's a community endeavor. It's... It truly is a family endeavor. I know with me, it was my family that got me involved with it and it's been something that's, that's stuck with me. It's been a lifelong tradition for our family. I mean, we've been hunting the same blind, the same piece of water for over 40 years on Thanksgiving morning, and that's important. Those types of traditions on Delmarva are slowly eroding, and I'd like to see more and more of that come back. You know, the uh, collection of stories here starts out kind of in the early days, and uh, back in those days, there was uh, sort of a cat and mouse game going on between the hunters and the, uh, uh, the game enforcement folks. Yeah, uh, it's always been that way, especially then on the necks on the peninsula. The further you get down, whether it be Saxes or Cambridge or, or you know, any of the little the, the, the necks that stick out on the, on the, in the bay, it's more of a sustenance type hunting. Those folks were relying on the waterfowl for their food, and that providing for their family was paramount. And whichever way they could do that best for their family is what they did. These uh, guys that you knew yes. uh, started out hunting in days when there were no rules. The rules, I think, have been a good thing, but still that outlaw mentality, that, that moonshiners type of thing where you know what's going on, you just don't necessarily need to see it. Um, you know, that, I think, is part of the, the success of the book. Uh, it's been a source of interest throughout Delmarva, and it's part of our history. Uh, CL, I started reading your book sitting next to my wood stove, and uh, I got into two or three of the stories there, and my feet started getting cold, and my nose started running a little bit. So I think if you're a duck hunter, or if you know a duck hunter, and want to find out what makes them tick, these stories here will uh, give you some pretty good clues. The photography in it is truly incredible. It kind of pulls you into the story. Uh, Paul Bramble's photography was, is truly excellent, almost like it was written just for the book. Tell me something. Why did you write this book in the first place? <laughs> well, I was reviewing hunting logs from, uh, from the prior season, it was in February, and um, the stories were always there. You know, all I had to do was, was put them down on paper. So far we've shipped to 32 states and two different countries. Uh, and that part of it's been very rewarding and humbling. And probably the, the most humbling aspect of, of this book is when somebody buys it to give as a Christmas gift. That's a very personal thing, and that happens so many times over the holiday season, and I've had many people that have called and said, you know, thank you. I guess with uh, a little different dialects here and there, waterfowl hunters pretty much speak the same language everywhere. They do, they do. Uh, one of the things that was interesting about our local dialect, Willie, was when I took the book to the publisher, there was a lot of local dialect in the book. Hmm. and. Uh, They'd call, they're from Charleston, South Carolina, Arcadia Publishing, and they'd call me and they'd say, are you sure this is right? I'm like, yeah, I'm, <laughs> this is the way I want it to read. Yeah. And they're like, well, it doesn't make grammatical sense. And I said, I told her, I said, honey, if you lived up here, it'd make perfect sense. Yes. <laughs> you know, that leads to another question. How do you actually go about uh, from starting from scratch to uh, publish a book? Mm. I tell you, my journey to it was um, a little different than a lot of folks. I was truly blessed. I felt like I was blessed with good stories, and I was blessed with excellent photography, and I was blessed with an excellent artist, uh, Joyce Northam, who did the line art illustrations. And with that package, uh, I, was, I submitted it to uh, the publishing company, Arcadia Publishing, and they bought it right away. We considered self-publishing, we considered a lot of aspects, but now, I felt like we made a good decision for our first effort um, with the Chesapeake Bay Duck Hunting Tales. Our second effort, uh, Chesapeake Bay Outdoor Tales, will be out in the late summer, and we're certainly looking forward to that. Oh, great. I got to get one of the first edition. CL, been good talking to you. Willie, thank Thanks you guys for coming down. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Yes, sir.